Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. I know that this video is long overdue and for a while I didn't know if I was even going to make this video, but a lot of you guys have been asking me over Instagram like what the deal is, am I going back, and you guys want to know why. So in this video I'll be sharing a little bit about my experience this past year and what led me to take a year off of teaching. My hope for this video isn't to scare new teachers or anything like that. In fact, every time I saw one of these videos pop up, especially a lot were popping up in May of teachers sharing why they're leaving the field and stuff like that, I kind of just felt comforted in knowing like it wasn't me, it wasn't just my school, it wasn't just the state I teach in, but instead there's just an issue in our education system as a whole and anyways, seeing those videos kind of comforted me and made me feel like I wasn't the problem. So anyways, if you're watching this video and you've already been a teacher, maybe you guys can relate to some of the things that I'll be sharing. I guess just my encouragement is that teaching is an open door. If you want to take a break from it, teaching will always be there for you. You know, you can always go back. And if you're a new teacher watching this video, I have a video out on teacher tips and things that I realized I could have done differently um, this past school year. So I think that video would be helpful after watching this video. I'm hoping this video isn't gonna be long, but I'm just gonna share like the main things that led me to take this year off. So, just some background, this past school year was my third year teaching. Yes, I'm disappointed that I'm part of the statistic that says that most teachers will leave within the first five years of teaching. I had never imagined I would be part of that statistic, especially my first two years of teaching were phenomenal. If you guys have been watching my channel for a while, if you go back to my videos from two years ago, I'm over there sharing that I can see myself being a teacher for the rest of my life, how amazing this job is, and sometimes I cringe when those videos pop up and people are commenting on it, especially I have this video that I made like two years ago and it was like the pros and cons of teaching. And I mean, two years ago, the pros absolutely outweighed the con. I mean, it was before the pandemic. So I had a lot of great things to say about teaching at the time. And sometimes I cringe when that video comes up and people are commenting on it and I'm like, that's really not how I feel anymore. So much has changed after the pandemic and I really need to update that video. <laughs> that was just some background information. My first year was incredible. My second year, this was during the pandemic. Even though we faced so many challenges that year, I would still say that year was still so great to me. Even after ending that year, it didn't cross my mind that I would ever quit teaching. Uh, I still thought it was a great year despite everything we went through. So this year, it really is a shocker that it really only takes one terrible, terrible year to, I guess, lead you to try something different out. That's where I was. I feel like this past year, my mental health was like draining and I'm a, I'm a pretty joyful person. I've never even like, been through a season of depression or anything like that it's really easy for me to feel joy and to find joy but this past year i would just wake up every day before school and i'd just kind of be like ugh, like what is my life i would wake up and be unhappy and something that i mentioned in that pros and cons video two years ago was that i loved teaching at the time because every day was so different and you would never be bored of teaching. That was one of my reasons for pros of teaching, that like you'll never get bored because every day is so different. Well, this year that became like a huge con for me because I would wake up and be like, what am I gonna go through today? What is so-and-so gonna try to pull? What is so-and-so gonna do? I would wake up and already feel so anxious because I didn't know what the day was going to bring and how the day was going to end. This past school year, I had a ton of behavior problems, which was one of the reasons that led me to this decision. Um, but every year I've had behavior issues in my classroom. It's, it's so normal. You're going to have behavior issues and that's why you should really work on classroom management. And the first two years, it was fine. I was able to manage those behaviors and still teach. 
but this past school year was just so different. I mean, the behaviors that I had were different, like out of this world different, <laughs> but my second class specifically, and just like <laughs> before I just start talking about them, I love all of my students, every single one of them. Even the ones that gave me behavior like problems, I still loved them incredibly. And in fact, I was so, I'm sad for them because I felt like we could be doing more. Their parents could be doing more or because we're going into this world where there's no consequences anymore. I'm like, I felt so bad for these kids that had behavior issues because I felt like it's just gonna get worse because there are no consequences anymore. Um, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I would, I would just feel bad for them because I knew that there were no consequences going on at home. Um, there were no consequences at school. For example, this is just one scenario <laughs> of my school year, but, um, two of my students were making threats to each other, right? And so I call a TOV, which is a threat of violence so that they would be removed from my classroom. And then I guess, I really don't know what the protocols are after that. Like, I guess it depends on what the threat is. Anyways, for this particular scenario, they were making threats that they're gonna kill each other. And like, it wasn't just like, oh, I'm gonna kill you. It was like, I'm gonna punch you in your stomach till you throw up and die, like that kind of stuff. So I call a TOV and they're removed to my classroom and they're taken outside to go play and get their energy out. I get that to a certain extent, but when they came back to my classroom, both of them were just bragging about how much fun that they had, that they got to go out and have recess. I think it really bothered me that day mostly because none of my students had recess that day because it was a rainy day. So during recess at the time, my students were inside on their Chromebooks. They didn't get to go outside. So when those students came back inside, they were just out of breath and they were like, we had so much fun outside. And mind you, this did not take their energy out. They were still fighting with each other after this. So that bothered me just because my students were like so confused, like that's not fair, you know? That's just like one scenario of how this year kids aren't getting consequences and it's making it worse, a lot worse. So anyways, I didn't wanna be a part of that anymore. Like if my kids aren't gonna receive consequences for their actions, then my classroom isn't really gonna be a safe place. And that was another thing that I dealt with earlier in the school year. I had a really, really dangerous kid. I'm not gonna share a lot. He wouldn't come to school often, but every time he did show up to school, I would have to be extremely close to him just in case he tried to choke somebody. Or like I would, I would constantly feel on the edge because I constantly had to, like I have to teach, but I have to be like, in really close proximity with him. He ended up going to a different school, so that kind of made my classroom a little bit more safe throughout the school year. Um, but I still had issues with other kids not being really safe to be around. For example, one parent even had to pull her child out of my classroom because this parent didn't feel like her child was safe around another student. And I totally understood her. Myself wouldn't have wanted my own kid to be in my classroom this school year. And it wasn't about like me or my classroom in general. It was just about certain kids not being really safe to be around. And no one was doing anything about it. So that really sucked. And then with those behavior problems, if your classroom management isn't working, then you're gonna have a lot of instructional time loss. Um, because you're busy dealing with those behaviors, correcting those behaviors. That was me for my second class. I had lots of different behaviors where I had to stop teaching, watch this kid, you know, make him like not harmful to anybody. Or like constantly stop them and ask them like, okay, how, how are we going to deal with this situation? Do you want, you know, alone time in the hallway? Do you want to sit here? Do you want to sit there? Like I was constantly giving choice like you're supposed to. Even that took so much time away and it would have just been helpful that these kids had consequences for their actions instead of taking our learning time away. So that was just one huge reason why I decided to take this year off. It, it's not about the behaviors. It was 
the fact that no one was doing anything about the behaviors and they just got worse. There were no consequences. And like, if you do ride a kid up too many times or even just twice, like admin will come at you and be like, this is too much. That brings me to my second point, um, support and admin. My first two years, I had a really wonderful um, principal and assistant principals and everything was great. I feel like I had their support and they made me feel confident, made me feel like I could do this thing. But this past school year, we had a whole new administrative team and they just weren't supportive. I was <laughs> ignored all the time. There was one day, I'm getting choked up just thinking about this day. This was about my, oh my gosh. There was one time where there was um, a fight in my classroom and I quickly buzzed the office after separating the two and I was so choked up and like, <laughs> on the verge of tears when I called the intercom um, for someone to come to my classroom immediately. And, um, okay, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm in a counseling session right now <laughs> and like recalling trauma. Okay, but yeah, there was this one day, this was the worst day of the whole school year. I've never seen anything like this before. I teach third grade. <laughs> I'm just gonna fast forward it. Okay, so basically one student attacked another student I removed him from the classroom. My whole class is freaking out. The kid who was attacked is speechless. Like, And so anyways, I buzzed the office. The attacker is outside of my class. And I buzzed the office. Um, and I couldn't even get words out of my mouth. Like, it was just, it was so hard to like even talk. And so I, I called for help and a lot of people came down to help, which was awesome. Um, but I remember I went even to my partner teacher's class and I was just bawling my eyes out to my partner teacher telling her what just happened in my classroom and then um, she gave me a minute to calm down. I walk into my classroom and my kids were all speechless, speechless. And one of my kids, he's so funny, but he was like, wait till I tell my mama what just happened. I'm never coming back here again. <laughs> It's funny now, but at the time I just started bawling my eyes just in front of my class <laughs> because it was just like, oh my gosh, my classroom is not a safe place. That student gets suspended for a day and for a day, I literally thought I was never going to see the kid again because I was like, he just literally tried to kill another student in my classroom. Like surely he's not going to be in here ever again. Um, but no, he was suspended for a day. The point of sharing that story was because I remember my principal came into my classroom like a day later after school and she walks into my classroom and goes, Miss Hall, you're teaching a class that was never meant for you. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, what is that supposed to mean? Mostly because I'm like, I don't believe that. Every one of my students this year were mine for a reason. Like. God purposely put those kids in my classroom this year. I was always supposed to be their third grade teacher. But my principal was trying to tell me that it was a mistake that these kids were on my roster. What I had interpreted was that I wasn't as strong of a teacher uh, or as strict of a teacher to be with these kids with behavior issues. Anyway, that was the response I got from my principal and I just thought it was just like incredibly untruthful and unsupportive and very like belittling. So anyways, my experience this past school year was that like I couldn't ask for help because they would pretty much make you feel weak. They would make you feel like helping you is such an inconvenience for them. So support is everything. Like if you're at a supportive school and you have a great principal, that can totally change your entire experience. And a lot of people told me that too, given another shot at a different school, you know. And for a while I was like, yeah, I definitely think my school year could be better if I just went to a different school and gave it another shot. But I mean, ugh, I have a lot to heal from, honestly, from this past school year um, before I go back. Like, my love for teaching was definitely just 
fading day by day to the point where at the end of the school year, I'm just like, I don't even like this job anymore. And that's just not fair, you know, to the kids and just myself. I just felt like a whole different person. I went from teaching is everything. I was made for teaching. Teaching is my calling to me opening my eyes to how like toxic that way of thinking can be. Like we were not made for a job title, you know? Teaching is a job, you know? A job that pays your bills. It's not supposed to be my whole personality, my whole reason for existing. So all school year I was trying to detach myself from that idea that like I am nothing but a teacher, you know? Teaching is not my identity. It's not all that I am. And I think that's been the hardest part about like detaching myself from, you know, all of it. Just knowing like, like who am I? Who am I outside of the classroom, you know? So that's been quite a journey trying to figure out what else do I love? And for a while I was like, I was made to be a teacher, like I can't see myself doing anything else besides teaching, but like just throughout the school year, I was thinking of other uh, things that I could be doing with my life that would also make me happy. So I feel like that was making it more real for me to, you know, step outside of the teacher world for a season and um, just explore my opportunities. Another reason why I felt like it was time to explore other opportunities was just the realization that teaching is an open door. It will always be there for me, especially with the teacher shortage. I can always go back and I felt like that was healthier than sticking to this job that I now dislike and just keep going with it or taking a break from it, exploring different opportunities, then missing it and coming back with just a fresh perspective on it and you know hopefully going back loving it all over again rather than hating my life you know i constantly felt like i was wishing for the weekend couldn't wait for the next holiday couldn't wait for summer and i was just wishing my life away <laughs> and i'm like i can't do this for the next 30 40 years i would literally be wishing my life my whole life away it would be monday and I'm like, oh my gosh, I cannot wait to get to Friday. It was something that I felt like only teachers felt. I had never really heard my husband like wanting it to be Friday so bad, you know, or wanting it to be the next holiday so bad. Whereas me, I'm waking up on a Tuesday saying, dang it, it's just Tuesday, you know? So I felt like with teaching, I was constantly wishing my life away. I just didn't want that to be the case anymore. And truthfully, I'm like scared of time flying by so fast. Like I don't actually want time to fly by, but with teaching, I did. <laughs> yeah, I'm just reminded teaching is an open door. It'll always be there for me. I can always go back to it. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, you quit teaching and I'm like, no, I didn't quit. I just didn't renew my contract. So I'm not quitting teaching for good. I just didn't renew my contract this year and I would love to go back to it if things ever get better. And right now there's just so many things that I find joy in doing and I'm like, okay, I might as well explore these opportunities now. And if it doesn't work out or if it's not what I thought it was, I'll go back to teaching rather than never knowing. And the response I get from teachers when I told them I was taking a break was incredibly positive. Every single teacher was like, you go girl or good for you. Especially the veteran teachers. They were just like, oh, I wish I'm in too deep or I'm stuck. That's not how I want to be 30 years from now. Feeling like, oh, I've committed this, this X amount of years to it. Like I need to stick it out or the benefits are just too good right now. Let me live, live in misery. <laughs> you know, if you put in all these years, there's all these benefits. And I just, I didn't want to live in misery just for the benefits of it, you know? Those are just some reasons. And obviously you guys feel it too, like just feeling incredibly exhausted at the end of the day, especially this year more than ever. Even on the weekends, as much as I was wishing for the weekend when the weekend would come, I would be resting. <laughs> and healing and I just didn't feel like I was living my best life and I mean one day I hope to have a family I hope to raise kids of my own and I just don't know how people do that while being a teacher I feel like that wouldn't be fair to my kids to come home you know at 10% and not 
have the energy to want to have fun with them and that was like another reason constantly feeling exhausted and constantly getting sick yeah. i was sick every six weeks i was just constantly exhausted and stressed and obviously being with kids i was sick way too often and that just did not make me feel healthy so those are just honestly just some of the reasons why i decided to take a break this year but maybe i will find my way back to it the plan initially was you know to take a year off but i'm having fun doing other things right now so we'll just see what next year brings you know whether or not i'll be back or who knows so yeah those are some of the reasons you guys i hope each reason was understandable and if you're not a teacher, I hope this video was eye-opening and hopefully gives you some insight on what teachers go through. And if you're a parent watching this video, it would really help <laughs> if you're raising a decent human being. Yeah, I'm kind of just ranting at this point, but if you're a parent watching this video, be on our team. I think that's the best thing that we could do for your kids. And yeah, so I hope this video gave you some clarity and insight on why I'm taking Taking a different path this school year. You will definitely still be seeing teacher content on this channel, you know, like advice for new teachers, teacher resources that I used in my classroom, stuff like that, organization tips. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Bye.